Hey guys, and welcome back to the Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon playthrough. Very dramatic there. Uh, Richie, you didn't actually tell me how you felt when they first announced the game last time, so I'm not going to let you off the hook. Explain now, please. Well, when it got announced, I was very excited because obviously I knew that a lot of people really liked Luigi's Mansion, but I'd never played it at that point. And then... It kind of made me want to play the original Luigi's Mansion because I was going to get Luigi's Mansion 2. Mm. So, I'd been wanting to get it but didn't really get around to it. And then the Christmas or slash my birthday of the year when Luigi's Mansion 2 was coming out, um, my friend got it for me, birthday I think it was, and so I played the original Luigi's Mansion, really enjoyed it. Obviously it is a flawed game but it is really good. And then I was all ready and prepared for Luigi's Mansion 2, and so, kind of, I probably wasn't quite as excited as a lot of people were, <coughs> but that like, was only because... Like me, for example? Yeah, but that was only because I'd never played the original, so I'd never really had that connection to the series. Okay, thank you, Richie. That was his life story, and it filled up enough time to get us back into Gloomy Manor, so, perfecto. This is just what I do, I just talk and talk and talk and talk and somehow ramble to a point. But that's why I gave him the Prince of Persia 2008 playthrough to do, you know, it's just an outlet, really. <laughs> well, it's because I was the only one who wanted to do it, really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, simple objective uh, to get things off here, just go to the main hall. Cuts the atmosphere in full effect right now. This ghost is a dick. Well, this breed of ghost in particular yes. is a dick. Not only do they look strong, they can also create shockwaves. You'd think it would be enough for them to hit hard, but no, they got to throw shockwaves into the equation as well, just to be that much more of an ethereal dick. I'm just going to look up the uh, name of these particular ghosts while uh, Egad talks our ear off. I think it's something like Bruiser. Bruiser, Brawler, Big Guy, one of the yeah. two. Yeah. Also something that I don't think we did bring up last time, because we brought up about the jewel screen, but I'm... Oh, there we go. He's just brought it up. <laughs> He's going to call the DS the jewel screen. I thought he brought it up earlier, but it's here that he decides to give it that name. And uh, the Red Ghosts are actually called Slammers, so we were way off. Slammers. Wonderful. Well, it makes sense, considering they slam the ground and create the shockwaves, damn them. Thank you, Richie, that was the joke. <laughs> Much like EGAD, I'm a very passive-aggressive commentator. And I just ramble on. Yeah, that's why we make such a good team. Okay, next objective. Nice going for a door there, Luigi. That's random, that animation, that is, I think. Ah, very nice. Ooh, it's a spooky for you. I, I think you mean entrance, because that's what this room is called. Well, you say that, but there are some regional differences between the PAL and NTSC versions of the game, which can make it quite tricky when you're following a text guide. <laughs> oh god, I, I remember kind of when I first played the original Kingdom Hearts, I was using a guide because I'm just that type of gamer, and. It said, land on the faucet in, it was in Alice in Wonderland, Wonderland world. Uh -huh. And I was quite young at the time, and obviously we call it a tap over here. Oh yes, a what? So, faucet made no sense to me, so I had no idea what it was telling me to land on. Well, I grew up watching nothing but American television, so uh, it wasn't really that hard for me. I didn't really need a guide, but uh, I digress. These blue ghosts here... Very tricksy. They like to they like to hide in pots and drawers and other things that are hideable in, and uh, just basically chuck stuff at you, especially from off screen. The digs. So uh, if you're ever like trying to go up a staircase and you notice the uh, the candles like on each side of the staircase are blue, be prepared for a, a bit of an ambush. Oh, they're called Hiders, that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant naming. 
And also, Tom, you got hit. Well, it's a new era for HFC. I'm going to leave that hit in because, quite frankly, we got playthroughs to record and we're not putting stuff out fast enough, so, eh. Yeah, it's fine by me. I mean, it, especially when you get later on, it's not an impossible to dodge things, so... Like, damn it, I was trying my best and the last mansion can get pretty gosh darn tricky. I really like that library. A little bit of foreshadowing here because we won't be getting to uh, the library until about mission three, I think. Yeah, it does make sense that it'd be about then, really. We're just basically collecting cogs to uh, try and activate the mechanism in the, the main hall right now. Also, this is the uh, lamp that Egad was working on at the working in at the start of the game, which is quite awesome. Alright, come on out. There it is. Man, I can't wait until we get the upgraded Porgus, which, which has like two levels of sucking, you know, to suck even further beyond. So, uh. I, I think you mean suck even harder. Alright, <laughs> Captain Grammar Man. <laughs> Basically, it makes ghosts easier, or I would say. More no easier to catch. There we go. I, I don't. I don't need to be Captain Grammar Man in this play for his fine. It, it takes off more health in one fell swoop. Yeah, you do a thing and you win more easily. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Paint me like one of your French ghosts. I think it's a very good painting, considering he's a ghost and really shouldn't be able to, you know, paint. Yeah, how many of these ghosts are actually poltergeists? They kind of skirt around that issue. Yes, I mean, I think at a future point in the playthrough we should probably have a delve into the definitions of ghosts and poltergeists and all that jazz because I like that sort of stuff. Yeah, he ain't joking. He's going to give you the full lore of the spirit realm and it's going to be brilliant and you'll have no choice but to listen to it because it's either this or Twilight Princess so you're getting a, tri <laughs> you're getting a trivia overload either way really oh god I to, I, I'm really enjoying Twilight Princess at the minute because I've never played that either oh thank you co-commentator who is contractually <laughs> obliged to praise <laughs> HFC <laughs> I, I will say we haven't really talked about Gloomy Manor as a whole thus far Kind of cynically designed to evoke the feel of the original mansion in the first game, but not really a bad thing because it helps people who play that game, you know, acclimatize themselves more easily. Oh, it looks familiar. I feel a tad bit safer, even though there's ghosts that could probably kill me in my sleep dotted about, you know. But um, something familiar helps sometimes, I think. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much what I think. A lot of sequels should do, in the sense of if you make people feel comfortable at the start of your game, then it means that people are more willing to accept any crazy stuff that starts to happen afterwards. Yeah, it's like in Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, oh, I, f I forget the name of the town at the start. Twilight Town. Twilight Town, thank you. I, that was a bad idea. You see, I forgot because there's a Twilight Town in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Yeah, this is what happens when you name things similarly. It's kind of weird like that. But uh, Twilight Town, similar to Traverse Town, and so, you know, it, it just starts things off more easily. The player is able to acclimatise themselves that much more easily. Although, having said that, because you aren't playing the same characters you were in the first game, it kind of feels much more of a retread of the start than... Something being comfortable, but different enough to make you want to do anything. You may be wondering, say Entom and Reggie, what's the deal with all these spiderwebs? Well, I say to you viewers, you're going to have to wait for a video or two, I'm afraid. I'm not going to give you any spoilers right now. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Although, having said that, if you're looking at spiderwebs and wondering what the hell it is going on <laughs> with them, you just need to think it's, it's a spiderweb. Sometimes a spider web is just a spider web. It's got, it doesn't always have to deal with ghosts, even though this is a game that deals almost exclusively with ghosts. Did a little bit of a dodge there. I believe you can uh, activate that by pressing the B button. It is something like that, yeah. And later on, when you're kind of tasked with slightly more frantic fights with the ghosts, you are going to need to use that dodge move mm. a lot. 
Man, I could have really used that in the original game, especially when the ghosts started piling on and whatnot. Hey, hey. Now, Egad alluded to this, but that golden bone is basically, I would say, an extra life. Like, if you lose all, all of your health, the uh, polter pop, or whatever it's called, will come along and basically revive you. Well, that's what that does. I, I never knew what it did, so... Did you never die? Is that what you're trying to say? I, I think I didn't... Well, I might have died once or twice, but I must not have had one of the golden bones at the time, so I just I just thought, oh, this is just a, a fancy collectible thing, I'll just just get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Richie confirmed for A, never getting much treasure, and uh, B, not dying that much. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not the hardest game in the world. I mean, I'd say it's... Certain elements of it are a pain and difficult, but... In a way, it sort of feels easier than the first game. The first game felt very oppressive, so that kind of added to the psychological side of things to get a little bit pretentious for a second. Mm. Um, here is, again, more casual, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, because it's still the same type of gameplay. I would honestly say this is a little bit harder than the first game. I think it's just kind of... Everyone has different... Different things that they're good at, so... I I'm just not quite so good at this type of gameplay. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Also, I hate this room because I hate the hiders. Yeah, yeah, I can see what you mean. I had to do a fair few retakes before I was uh, happy with the run I got. Mostly because you'll fight one and the other one will be hiding way across the room, so you don't really have a chance to snag both of them at the same time. Pretty much. Right, come on out, you little slammer. Let's get this last gear. That slammer was going particularly strong because I'm pretty sure I saw kind of red marks on the ground as Luigi was dragged along. I hope his feet weren't getting set on fire. No, he's probably got special shoes, and I imagine Egad developed those as well. Well, considering he just got yanked out of his home, I don't think there would be special shoes. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Now, hang on a tick before you dematerialise me. I want to put on my kicks. <laughs> One of the amethysts that we need to collect is actually kind of off-screen here. I'm not sure how well you can see it, you know, given that... <laughs> we're, p we're basically playing a 3DS game and the screen is small to begin with, but uh, that one is fairly easy to miss. Yeah, I have to. I did not even notice that that was there. I know I got it in the when I played it, but I did not even realise that that amethyst was there. Okay, well, put another one on the Tom is a god list. Uh, <laughs> tick it off. There we go. Boom, done. I can platinum bayonetta. Ha! <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, Tom. Be <laughs> <laughs> <You> pretentious <laughs> twat bag. <laughs> Like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, really. I don't think Luigi kind of gets how this sort of thing works. But he's a plumber, he should be able to think about these sort of things. They did plumbing like one time in Superstar Saga. I think... I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think there may actually be some sort of plumbing thing that you can see in Luigi's house at the start. Um, what, what, his plumber's degree or something? It's something like a trophy of some sort, I think. Or I might just, I might just be making something up out of thin air. Yeah. <laughs> the Mario universe doesn't have the deepest law, so we have to invent our own. <laughs> well, I mean, it's exactly like inventing a timeline for Mario as well, because obviously Super Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's Mansion 2, it's all in the same timeline. Uh, where does the split happen? Is like Super Mario Land and Super Mario World in the same timeline, or is there kind of like a split somewhere? Well, I honestly cannot remember. A bought joke! A bought joke! <laughs> now, you, you'll see back there I got a silver two-star rank. Um, you may think it's because I took a hit. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes it's down to factors like how much treasure you collected, how long you took to beat the mission, stuff like that. Egad, you, you're seriously having a giggle right now, mate. This is not how you treat a friend that you dematerialize and essentially kidnap. Well, I think it also suggests exactly what people weren't expecting, but it's something that you probably should be able to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Hey. 
hate them. I do like that the hiders look like paintbrushes, sort of, so them doing the paintbrush was quite a nice idea. Are you sure that was a deliberate design decision, or just the polygonal nature of the 3DS's hardware rendering and whatnot? I'm kind of pulling terms out of my ass here. Well, we should probably give them the benefit of the doubt for now, and if they decide to throw it back in our faces later on, they can do so, and we can give them the finger. Okay, that is mission two completed. I guess I'll come back here later and freestar it. But for the time being, that'll do us for today, so please join us next time on the Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon playthrough, where we visit a library. Bye-bye for now.